Good day. Welcome to the second lesson of the subject Mathematics in the Modern World. We are Shara Asas and Ronalyn K. B. Bayan to discuss to you the first part of the second chapter, which is Mathematical Language and Symbols. First, let's differentiate language and mathematical language. Language is the system of words signs, and symbols which people use to express ideas, thoughts, and feelings, while mathematical language is the system used to communicate mathematical ideas. To be more precise, mathematical language is specifically for mathematical ideas, while language um, has a broader sense. In the English language, we have nouns, which is... Um, a name of a person, place, or things, and verb, which is an action word. Here in mathematical language, we also have that. But when we say noun in mathematical language, we refer to numbers, measurements, shapes, spaces, functions, pattern, data, and arrangement. While the verb considered is considered as the four main actions attributed to problem solving and reasoning. Okay, so let's discuss the mathematical verb. According to Kenny et al. 2005, these four main actions are modeling and formulating, transforming and manipulating, inferring and communicating. We'll use the steps in solving a word problem as an example to this mathematical verbs. Okay, so for the first one, we have the modeling and formulating. It's defined as creating appropriate representations and relationships to mathematize the original problem. Example, in problem solving, what's the first thing that we do? We read the problem, we comprehend. We imagine the scenario and draw some representations like diagrams, tables, and etc. And we also write the given and the formulas to use. So that is for the first mathematical verb. For the second one, we have transforming and manipulating, which is defined as changing the mathematical forms that represent solutions. This is where solving takes place until you get to the final answer. The third one is inferring, applying derived results to the original problem situation and interpreting and generalizing the result in that light. In here, we go back to the original question or problem and ask ourselves, did we find the right answer? And lastly, we have communicating, reporting what has been learned about a problem to a specified audience. Okay, um, in here in communicating, if ever you are tasked to explain, you will report the previous steps to the certain audience. Okay, so that is for the mathematical verb or the four, which is attributed to the four main actions of problem solving okay let's now have the characteristics of mathematical language according to jamison 2000 the use of language in mathematics differs from the language of ordinary speech in three important ways first mathematical language is non-temporal so when we say non-temporal meaning there is no past no present and no future in mathematical language. The second one, mathematical language is devoid of emotional content. Meaning to say we have no emotional attachment towards mathematical language. And lastly, mathematical language is precise. It's exact. When we say precise, it is exact. When we say 1 plus 1, there is no other answer than 2. 
so that is just an example of how precise mathematical language is. There's only a certain answer to a certain problem. Next, we have mathematical expressions and sentences. Okay, so we have your operational terms and symbols for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Let me remind you that these are some of the operational terms and symbols we use for us to express a mathematical expression in sentence and vice versa. Okay, keep in mind those. Let us try to translate words into mathematical symbol or expression. Okay, for the first one, we have the product of 3 and a number. So let's translate this. So we have 3n or 3 multiplied to n. So how did we do that? We have here the word product. So we'll use multiplication. Next. We have here the word 3, so we'll just symbolize 3. And we have here a number wherein we can use any letter from the English alphabet. That's why this is the result, this is the resulting mathematical expression. Okay, let's try the next one. You can pause the video and try translating on your own before I reveal the answer. A number is divided by 4. The answer. Next, 5 times the sum of a number and 2. This is the answer. Next, 6 subtracted from a number P. So this is the answer. Next, Two less the quotient of 15 and a number. This is the answer. And lastly, the quotient of a number S and 5 subtracted from the square root of 4. This is the answer. Okay. Let's now try translating mathematical symbols into words or sentences. Take note that we have different terms that we can use and there can be multiple correct answers in one expression. The first example we have 2x plus 6. The operation is addition. We can use the terms like sum, uh, added to, total, and etc. We also have here 2x, wherein the operation is multiplication. We can say that this uh, could be translated as the sum of twice a number and 6, or 2 times a number plus 6. So there could be various answers to that. I'm going to present some examples again. You can pause the video and try to translate. Second example. The answer is... Third example. The answer is... Okay. Let's now proceed with mathematical expression. Mathematical expression consists of terms that are separated by either plus or minus sign only. Let's have the parts of mathematical expression. First is numerical coefficient, the number attached to the variable. Example, 10x plus 11 the numerical coefficient here is 10. Next is the literal coefficient or the variable itself. In our example, it's the letter x. And lastly, we have the constant 
or any single number. Presented in our example, the constant is 11. Next, we have mathematical sentence. It is a combination of two mathematical expressions using a comparison operator. Comparison operators are equal, not equal, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. Let's now proceed in differentiating equation and inequality. So we have here examples of equation 4x plus 3 is equal to 19 and 6y minus 5 is equal to 55. Then we, ha we have here examples of inequality. 15x minus 5 is less than 3y and we also have 18 is greater than 16.5. As you can notice, the only comparison operator that we use in equation is the equal sign and the other five comparison operators are for inequality. And that's how you distinguish if the given mathematical expression is an equation or inequality. Next is open and closed sentence. Open sentence this is a mathematical sentence wherein it is not known whether to be true or false. So later on, I will uh, further discuss it. And we also have closed sentence wherein it is known to be either true or false. And it can be classified into two, which are true closed sentence and false closed sentence. Let's now have the examples for open and closed sentence let's proceed first with open sentence examples are 2xy is less than 3y 18w is greater than 16.5 we also have 3 multiplied to m plus n is equal to 100 we have 8ab minus c is equal to 1 and x plus y is equal to 5 as you can notice we cannot say if the following given for open sentence are true or false we cannot say that 2xy is really less than 3y we also cannot say that x plus y is really equal to 5 or 3 multiplied to the quantity m plus n is equal to 100 so that is for open sentence we cannot judge the mathematical sentence whether to be true or false we cannot determine if the sentence is true or for or false so that is for open sentence okay let's now have the examples for closed sentence example one we have two multiplied to the quantity x plus y is equal to 2x plus 2y so according to the definition of closed sentence we can determine if a mathematical sentence is true or false so in this example is it true or a false closed sentence okay it is a true closed sentence by using the distributive property how about the second example we have nine is an even number is it true or false okay it is a false closed sentence because nine is an odd number next example we have 10 minus 1 is equal to 8 Okay, so it will fall under the false closed sentence as well because 10 minus 1 is equal to 9. How about the next example? 3 is greater than negative 1. Okay, it is true closed sentence because 3 is larger than negative 1. How about the next example? 8C minus C is equal to 7. 7C. Okay, it is a true closed sentence as well. And how about the last example? The square root of 4 is 1. Okay, it is, it will fall under the false closed sentence. So as you may notice, the difference between 
uh, the open and closed sentence. Open sentence, we cannot judge whether the sentence is true or false. While in closed sentence, we can judge if the sentence is true or false. That's why we have a true closed sentence and false closed sentence. Let's now have the two things to consider to understand the meaning of a math symbol. First is context, which refers to the particular topics being studied. Say for example, pi. If the context or topic is about geometry, the equivalent value of pi is 3.14. While if the context is about trigonometry, the equivalent value of pi is 180 degrees. So, it is important to understand the context for us to understand the meaning of a certain symbol, most especially in mathematics. Because if you do not understand the context, um, there could be a confusion in the meaning of a certain symbol. Next one is the convention, a technique used by mathematicians, engineers, and scientists in which particular symbol has a particular meaning. In convention, the meaning of a symbol depends on the person using it. Example, in representing variables in a problem, student A used the variable x to represent a leg in a triangle. Then, student B used x to represent the hypotenuse in a triangle. As you may notice, in convention, the meaning of a symbol depends on the person using it, while in context, the meaning of a symbol depends on the topic. So that is how you um, differentiate the two things to consider to understand the meaning of math symbol. Okay, so that is for the first part of the second chapter. Thank you.